Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Deputy Assistant Secretary Chung, uh, as you know, I and members of this committee introduced bipartisan legislation last month to strengthen U.S. competitiveness in Latin America and the Caribbean and address China's economic security and intelligence engagement. Uh, I believe that our efforts on this bipartisan basis are complementary. AXA requires the Departments of State and Treasury to provide technical assistance to regional partners to help them safeguard their infrastructure from predatory foreign investments, similar to the Committee for Foreign Investment in the United States, CFIUS. Can you tell me what initial steps have been carried out on this front? Thank you for your question, um, Senator. On, on CFIUS and investment screening, this is something that's a very important issue throughout the region and, and throughout the world, of course, and we thank you for the AXA bill. Uh, we will consider that, uh, the details of that and discuss with our staff on some um, feedback regarding that bill. But in terms of CFIUS and investment screening, we have extensive engagements in the region. We have been sending technical delegations to countries in the region to explain uh, how public procurement processes and transparent processes work. We have helped governments build that capacity through the America Cresci Initiative. We have 10 MOUs now signed with countries throughout the region, and that's part of the, the uh, tool to use in addressing the corruption issues that China is bringing to the region. How do we ensure the countries have the right tools in place, the practices in place, the procurement practices and regulatory framework so that private sector companies will want to come and invest in those countries and ensure they have a level playing field? Thank you. So we are working through the America Cresce Initiative. Thank you. AXA also strengthens the DFC's engagement in Latin America and authorizes additional eligibility for Caribbean countries. Can you briefly outline how the administration prioritizes DFC engagement in the region? Thank you, Senator, for the question. Uh, DFC has been a, a wonderful tool and resource that we've been able to now utilize more than ever. Uh, and from the former OPEX utilities, now expanding that broad, uh, broader base in Latin America and the Caribbean. So DFC in our region has already invested and has pledged to invest $12 billion in just the Western Hemisphere alone and in Central America, $3 billion. So it's already invested in Central America, in El Salvador, for instance, on an LNG project and other projects that are forthcoming. But we are working strategically with DFC to ensure that these are strategic, uh, that they have purpose, and that they bring the right competitiveness and transparency to the region. AXA also requires a designation of a China engagement officer at the Western Hemisphere embassies to report on China's presence in the region. Can you briefly outline for us the reporting offices you have in the region? Thank you, uh, Senator. We do have one uh, China uh, officer, China regional officer based in the Western Hemisphere in Lima. We just got approval to get three additional positions in the region, so we're very excited to be placing those three positions um, in Panama, Uruguay, and Barbados. In addition to that, every embassy in the Western Hemisphere has a China working group who does regular reporting uh, through our cable one cable uh, channels, and we do coordinate all the messages throughout the Western Hemisphere in our monthly message. And finally, uh, ATSA requires the executive branch to provide our regional partners with assistance on cybersecurity and cyber defense. Can you briefly outline any initial efforts in that regard? On cyber issues, we have two very new initiatives that we took from the Indo-Pacific that we are now launching in the Western Hemisphere. One is the DCCP, the Digital Cybersecurity Partnership. Now that uh, was only um, planned for the Eastern, for the EAP region, but realizing the importance of cybersecurity and 5G issues in the Western Hemisphere, we launched this for the first time now in our region uh, with an in initial investment of $10 million. But this will provide for cybersecurity training and shared best shared practices and working with our partners to make sure they are aware of the cyber issues and have the right tools to address them. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate your responses and it's good to see that our bill and the administration's initiatives are mutually reinforcing. And I look forward to working with the chairman, hopefully to schedule a markup on AXA so we can have congressional support for some of these initiatives. Secretary Stilwell, as you know, authoritarian nations such as China and Russia are utilizing emerging technologies in new ways to surveil and repress both domestic and foreign populations as well as manipulate democratic elections. Furthermore, these countries are now spreading their models for digital authoritarianism to other countries who may be attracted to these new modes of social control. What's the administration's strategy 
to counter the spread of digital authoritarianism and the malign use of digital products and services in the Indo-Pacific? Senator, thank you for that question. Uh, as um, you know, my colleague from the Western Hemisphere noted that the, this strategy is not limited to uh, EAP, but it's been uh, throughout um, you know, globally, we've been uh, executing this uh, effort to take down things like Hike Vision, DJI, and these names are all well known to us because we have been shining a light on uh, these activities that would otherwise seem uh, uh, benign, but are in fact nefarious. The most recent, I think you'll find, you've seen, is identifying uh, apps, seemingly innocuous, TikTok and others, uh, as for what they are, massive uh, collection platforms for information used by the Chinese Communist Party. I'll point to yesterday, New Zealand uh, discovered that their prime minister had been targeted by this. So the strategy involves uh, not just focusing on China itself, but uh, helping the world defend uh, from these uh, things. I think you maybe remember Kirk, uh, um, Keith Kroc and I um, confirmed together uh, 18 months ago, and he's been leading the way on many initiatives, the clean uh, initiatives. You've heard that series already uh, that also uh, bring all these ideas into one place, and he's uniquely qualified to talk about digital security. Thank you. Well, I'm happy to hear from him in the future. I'll just simply say I was more focused on digital authoritarianism, the use of technology to try to control people and nations that seem to be uh, uh, following China's lead and accepting China's technology. So I'd love uh, to hear from that uh, for, for the record uh, uh, as soon as you can. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.